everybody. Hi everyone. This is Aionic. This is the first time I've ever done charm kiting here, so let's see how it goes. Spell it. There we go. Oh, perfect. Okay, let's take one that got damaged. That's it. Yeah, let's charm it. Charm cutting seems to work better here, to be honest. Look at this. I'm gonna instantly grab all aggro. And the mobs run away too immediately. Break the charm. Okay, let's throw a snare on you. You really have to manually twist, though, to do this. Hopefully Caden doesn't steal. Okay, another kill. Let's take the one that was damaged. So... Yeah, it looks like... Uh, to be honest, charm kiting it looks even easier to do on uh, on live than on P99 because they instantly swap onto the mobs. I don't have to run them over. Looks like people don't know what it is too, <laughs> but the problem is mana. It burns so much mana. So don't sit. That'll grab aggro. Uh, six. I need to dispel the charm. Come on, dispel. Thank God. Oh, it's because I was targeting the wrong mob. That's why. I see. So Dispel does work good for breaking the charm without having to do the mez. I mean... Mm. Yeah, Dispel does seem to work good for breaking the mez, but you just gotta make sure you're targeting the right mob. You don't have to go in Viz to break your charms. Not entirely sure how I feel about this one minute long charm that this song became. Not entirely sure. It's nice I don't have to constantly recast a charm, but I can't. I'm always having to break it early. I 
think. Yeah, you can't. Wow, it's actually really effective, though. Burned a bit of mana, but still. And I'll show the other thing you can do. So this is just normal chant kiting for bards. I guess this video will be how bards can solo. <laughs> so um, in a previous video I showed Quag Maelstrom. He's actually not hard to take out as a bard either. It just takes a long time. So. This is basically all you do. You just keep a snare on them, you throw your three dots, and just kite them around. Um, the J-boots definitely help out so you don't get caught. And this, you don't use any mana, you don't use any... Um, uh, health or anything, you're not in risk of any, of any of that, so it's actually quite easy. You can pretty much kill most things that are even casters. And the thing about Quag, he has a mana drain ability. Quag Maelstrom has a mana drain that he'll cast on you occasionally. But the thing is that barred mana doesn't work like other classes. It's really different. So what I noticed is he he did actually land a couple on me. Most of the time it was resisted. Maybe like 8 out of 10 times it was resisted. But the two times it did land, it did nothing. Even when it did land. Because bard's um, mana... Uh, bards really have nothing they can do to improve mana regen by, say, Clarity or by their own mana regen songs that don't do anything to improve bard mana regen. The only thing you can do to improve bard mana regen is basically to sit, so you get two ticks per minute, or no, uh, two, two points of mana per tick, that's what happens, instead of one, like when you're standing. Right now I'm only getting one mana per tick. Or wear a flowing thought item. My understanding. Those are the only things a bard can do to improve mana regen. And I think there's an AA too that does it, but that's it. And that's why charm kiting is such a issue as a bard. Because if you don't get enough time to med back, back that mana, you're going to be completely drained at the end of it. Or if you die, your mana is completely gone. Um, and you know what? I'll show one more method soloing that bards can do here on live. There's two more, but I... yeah, let's just show them. Why not? Making a video of it. Okay, so the next method is fear kiting. Take that, and let's take that. Okay, let's do it. I don't want to do it with a Sea Fury because it'll take forever. I'll just show it with a basic mob. Guardian of Canaan, who are you? <laughs> Harm the Oracle and die. What? Okay, so let's show it with this. So, you're going to want to first twist your snare, so that's seven, then your fear, and then your haste. 
and then you could do anything else in there with it too but like a dot or whatever but that's what you want to do then you want to get your melee out and just basically beat on them the reason i don't like it is because my dps output is just garbage against the sea furies i don't hit hard enough but this is the beauty of this technique you can show it on the next mod that's a caster this is the only way this is a way that you can kill casters without taking a single breaking their cast essentially yeah this guy's a caster let me kill your pet okay I'm going to take a bit of damage when I do this. I should have dispelled him, but... Okay, here he comes. So you see he's casting on me a crap ton. So if this was a higher level mob, I'd be getting nuked to oblivion. He's just standing there. There we go. Now he can't cast on me anymore. Beat him. Drop of Grease, Rusty Dagger, Size Fries, Rocket, Tiered All Head. That's weird. And then there's one more technique that I'll show um, for soloing. And it's basically mezzing. So I'll get, I'm going to pull that ogre over there. Six, seven, three, four. Do that. Okay, so you'll fight normally like you do. And then let's say that you get low on health and you gotta stop. So you'll cast your Mez, back off, heal yourself up with him and then get back into the fight. That's basically all you do. Really simple. I don't like it because it's the least efficient. Counting in your... your melee damage is a joke. But... Ooh, we gotta see Fury. See if I can do another swarm charm kite. None down there. Uh, none there. What I love about this game when it comes to kiting too is you don't have to manually loot the corpse, which makes it so much easier because I remember just corpses being littered everywhere when I would... Oh, he's got him. Okay, so I guess I'm not going to be able to show another example of charm kiting. No other mobs to get. Yeah, there isn't. So I'll just show another of snare kiting. Essentially, I guess is what it's called, snare dock kiting. But uh, yeah, AOE swarm kiting, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, AOE dot swarm kiting, where you uh, just basically kite mobs around in circles while casting your AOE dots. Um, 
what happened is they they changed the way those AoE dot songs work to where they only do damage on mobs that are standing still. So if that mob is moving at all, it won't take any damage. So right now, if I had an AoE dot on it, it wouldn't do a single point of damage. Now, fortunately, the single target dots still do, which is big because you couldn't do charm kiting without it, um, honestly. Because the problem with charm kiting is once those mobs start running away, if you can't damage them, they're just going to run off to oblivion. So this makes it rather convenient in that regard. But... Uh, yeah, they always swarm kiting gone. You have to rely on charm kiting, to be honest. And you can see it's taken a while to get the mana back. Um, and what I noticed the differences in charm kiting is so this song on P99, it's a 15 second or 18 second duration spell that costs 15 mana. Um,. So you, if your mob's getting beat down a lot faster, I think it's a lot better because the charm breaks sooner and you burn less mana. But if your fight's going on longer, like you got two mobs fighting each other, just instead of like five on one like it did in suits in P99. Um, if you're just doing a one-on-one -on -one fight, this is actually a lot better because you don't have to keep refreshing the charm. But the one thing about the charm itself is that... Um, you can't recast it uh, before the charm is the original charm is broken. So on P99, you know the t the charm's gonna break in like five seconds, so you can start your recast on the charm, and it'll be immediately back on as soon as the charm breaks. You can't do that here. You have to fully wait for the charm to break, and then you can recast it, which is kind of a pain, but whatever. You just deal with it. <clears throat> But yeah, as you can see, pretty, pretty, pretty easy. Nothing too crazy about doing that. I think you just kill a couple mobs until you burn out of mana, and then keep doing it. Um. So most of the soloing techniques that Bards had, they are still in place, apparently. Here, let me see. The, yeah, these are the AoE dots. Chords of Dissonance. Chords of Cessation is an AoE dot. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Um, one thing I'll mention too is you have two ways to break a charm. Two big ways. You can A, you can dispel it, which is what I was doing. Or you can uh, go invisible. So you can click hide here. This is kind of an iffy though. It doesn't always seem to work. Or you can use your own hide, your own invisibility song, which is... Uh, Shari Sonorous Clouding, or you could get, uh, in the future when Kunark drops, you can get one of those Goblin Kazuki rings that I used all the time on Ionic. Uh, it was invisibility versus animals, but instant charm break. Um, it was an insta-cast, but it was targeted, so you had to target yourself first before you could use it. Um, so that, that was actually quite effective. I had it right here. So that was one thing you can do. Um, and there's one other really big thing that I want to mention in this video, even though it's gonna, this is about a different topic, but it's a very, very important thing to mention. This is a humongous difference between P99 and uh, Live, as I've noticed. But let me get this kite started. He's going to just magically warp. Watch. Oh, wow. No, no, he didn't. So the difference is this. It, it's in terms of camps and pulling mobs and all that. So 
On P99, they, they abide by something called the Play Nice policy, which one of the biggest things about that is uh, FTE, term FTE, which means first to engage. So they have a really prominent GM presence on P99, and if you were to steal from a camp or steal a mob from someone's camp, or if someone hit a mob first, and then you try to steal it from them and engage it, that would be a bannable offense, or you get in trouble for it. So first to engage, what that would especially means for raid targets, is the first person to tag a raid target, say Finical Autotrops, is the only person that, um, or the first group that gets targets it, is the only one that's legitimately allowed to kill that mob, unless they all die. So that's what FDE is. So if anybody at that point that's not in that first group uh, attacks that mob, that would be considered kill stealing and, and uh, disruption. And that can actually get you banned on P99. So I was abiding by those policies when I was playing here on live, but no, it's actually completely different here on live. It's, it's full on, it's a wild west. And what I mean by that is the GM presence is a lot more scarce here on uh, live. I don't think they have enough people to really police everything per se. And uh, they seem to be a lot more lax on stuff. They said let, the, let people decide it on their own. That seems to be how the rules are here. So what do I mean by that? Her 2D2. You'll see a lot of people with names that maybe like copyrighted names. No one cares. You'll see a lot of names that are inappropriate. No one cares. Guild names that are inappropriate. You'll see a lot of kill stealing here. You'll see a lot of just overall dirty behavior. You'll see boxers that are technically breaking the rules, but because they're paying for multiple subscriptions, the devs don't necessarily, the GMs don't care. There's a lot, the GMs have really kind of stepped back and they don't really enforce a whole lot. And so there's this Wild West sort of attitude here on live. And what that means is first to engage is a joke. It doesn't exist here. I'll repeat that again. First to engage is an absolute joke. It is not something that exists on live. Where it does exist on P99, where you will get banned if you engage a mob after someone else tagged it not here on this server on um on live the rule of the, is this dps is king whoever does more dps wins the fight and that's basically it and there's no gms you can cry to about now most people are respectful and like they wouldn't attack a mob right now because i've done enough damage on it you have to do 50 percent 40 or 51 percent in order to get the exp or to claim the kill but most people are respectful and they wouldn't try to snipe it now but when it comes to some of the big name targets, yeah, you can see some real dirty stuff. Especially the fact that you can dispel other people's charms. <laughs> you can dispel. That was something you could see in one of the videos I did with Finical Autotrops in Open World, where this other guild was going to try to outcompete us. And charm pets do an incredible amount of damage. So I had to dispel this one seahorse that this other guild enchanter got and it got nasty you know i was constantly breaking this charm and this guy was trying to hide the charm behind a bunch of buffs it would... that's just how it is here where if you did that on b99 it probably would have gotten banned but it's actually it's what you're supposed to do here on live it's a lot more cutthroat in that regard so what you'll especially notice a big reason on ocean of tears big thing about ocean of tears um so on p99 the ancient cyclops only spawns on one island like say this island right here that's adjacent it only spawns on one island and one static spot that does not move on live it's entirely different the ancient cyclops can spawn anywhere on on sea fury island anywhere um and it's not a static spawn he roams and all that so there could be multiple of them up at the same time and the thing about it is it's really first to engage and whoever does the most damage. When it comes to Ancient Cyclops, all rules go out the window. So the best class actually to snipe Ancient Cyclops, these are bards. Because you can charm them. Well, first of all, yeah, you can charm the mob so no one can do any damage to it. 
But if someone dispels the charm and they charm themselves, you can dispel their charm and get it back. And you have the ability to outrun everybody else. Once your charm's active, you can run as far away as you want and the charm won't break. So once you got the charm, all you have to do is bar its speed away to a separate island where there's no competition and you got it. You've won. So one of the tricks you'll see people do when trying to get the ancient cyclops is track sort to alpha numeric. So the, the it goes alphabetical. The names are all alphabetical in here. Which is tremendously, tremendously helpful. But yeah, that's that's the point I want to make. Again, um I could steal that mob if I wanted, but no, that's just rude. Oh, another pop that fast? Wow. Is there a second? I have inefficient just to kill one at a time. It was like Gornet up or something. Okay. So yeah, that's one thing um, that I'd really caution people to be wary about. If you come from P99 to live, the rules are way different. It's a lot more cutthroat. And where people might say, oh, um, people might say that a lot of the difficulty factor has been removed and all that, especially when it comes to rating. Actually, no. I'd, I'd argue to differ. I beg to differ that um, you can still do open world targets just like you do on P99. It's just you're not stuck with having to do them. What I mean by that is because there's instancing, you know, if, if there's one mob that you absolutely have to kill for your epic, you're not bound you're not screwed because that's the only instant because it's the only one that'll spawn for the entire server for every seven days you can spawn your own instance kill it yourself and you still get an opportunity for open world which is something i really do appreciate um i, I do plan on making a video contrasting p99 versus tlp versus live pretty soon but honestly uh the quick thing i'll say is um Especially, yeah, P99, they're gonna be about to have green server soon in October. It's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be an absolute nightmare. And what I mean by that is you're going to have guys the Deceiver, which it's not that big of an issue to get one on live because of instancing of Guck. Imagine that camp is going to be perma because there's only one version. There's only one lower Guck on P99. That zone is going to be perma camped for that uh, guys the deceiver, which is going to be insane. You're not going to be able to get one. Some camps are just going to be perma camped. There's going to be too many people in these freaking zones, and there's going to be no way to load balance it. It's just going to be a nightmare, to be honest. And then they got the same exact issues with with raiding, where there's only one for the, one raid mob for the entire server. Once it's down, you got to wait a whole week. It's just going to be nightmare, nightmare. Absolutely. But uh, not to say that it isn't fun. I mean, it's kind of cool to play a game with one of the classic mechanics, the classic the classic patches before they made things a, a bit more convenient. But some of the convenience features, advanced loot table, I don't want to go back. Screw the old system. I actually have a working LFG thing or having global auction. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't want mind losing Melody. That's not a big deal. I really like Bandolier, though, where you can throw Bandolier on your your, act, your activation, your, uh, on your, uh, song macros. That really helps, but. Uh, yeah, uh, that's essentially all I want to talk about in this video. Pretty important video, I'd say, if, um. Any of you guys were interested. Uh, so just quick synopsis uh, before I go. I think there was someone that asked me a question uh, if charm kiting is feasible. On P99, it definitely is. It still works. It's just it's a bit more finicky. The mobs are a lot less sticky to your pet. So what I mean by that is you'll notice in the videos where I did swarm kiting or charm kiting in uh, Awakening Lands on the suits, um, the mobs never immediately attacked my charm pet. What I had to do 
was run around and essentially train all of those mobs onto my charm pet. But if I did a single point of damage to any other mob, it would never work. So it's a lot more finicky on P99, but it's definitely doable. It's doable, but it's kind of finicky and things will seem to screw up. Um, one of the differences I noticed is that as so long as there's a couple different mobs in that swarm and one of the mobs is below 20%, they will never flee. Whereas on here, you just saw, even though there was plenty of other mobs for support, uh, that the Charm Sea Fury that I got down to below 20 still fleed, even though there was four other mobs right next to it, which is a bit different. Um, I'd say Charm Cutting seems to work a lot better on live. The aggro stickiness seems to be a lot better there, better here on live than it is on P99. But it's still feasible to do on P99. It's still doable. But I'd say swarm kiting, AoE dot swarm kiting is really a better technique just because it doesn't burn mana. And um, and that's your major crutch as a bard. You'd have downtime because your mana regen is so bad. Well, suits aren't that bad because you can regen enough mana back in the 14 minute, 30 second respawn to be able to re-engage. Even if you're down, say, 70 to 60% of your mana, you can still have enough mana to regen it up. But, um, yeah. Alrighty, uh, thank you guys all for watching, and I shall see you in the next video.